I'm really excited about Infamous because as a player, I am one of those people who wants to be able to just go everywhere. And when we say that it's an open world game, we mean that in three dimensions. We have this ability to climb over everything. It's kind of infectious. PS3 is really the only place we could have made this. PlayStation 3 is kind of like a, a very deep well, and I have never seen the bottom of it yet, performance-wise. So it's a pleasure to have that freedom, to create a game where you're really limited by your imagination and the hardware is not this roadblock that it used to be. It's a large, interactive streaming world with tons of characters, tons of content, um, and we certainly take you know good advantage of the hard disk that's there to be shuttling all this information in. But perhaps the most important aspect of it for us is the cell processor. It's this mind-boggling number of, of calculations that are going into how to get everybody's feet and body lean in the correct place. And on top of that, it's doing visibility, it's doing um, a whole bunch of our skinning and animation code, it's doing particle systems. And all of this stuff has been crafted and, and created to run specifically on the cell processors. There are layers and layers of animations. It's something that the PlayStation 3 and our engine actually allows us to really take advantage of. It's just layering those and not having to worry about the overhead associated with that. It allows us to do some very creative things and some very expressive things. We really needed to have the power of the PS3 there. Uh, all the bandwidth we get out of the RSX graphics chip, the capacity, the Blu-ray. When we're making this game for the PS3, we're constantly amazed by how much um, the technology allows us to add a lot more. It's cool. From the very beginning of the game, we knew we wanted a system that allowed Cole to just kind of master the city, to climb all over it. It's a jungle gym for Cole. If it looks like you should be able to get there, you can get there. And we really made it so that you have this feeling of playing a very live, kind of agile, panther-like character who really just is capable of going everywhere. Our goal was to let you grab and climb on anything you saw, uh, but in a real city, there are lots of things you can grab. Uh, we have a debug mode in the game where you can uh, turn on little displays to show you everything that Cole might grab, and it's amazing. As he moves along the rooftops, there's a sort of rhythm to his actions, and as a player, you feel it. You zip along, you jump, you repulse gravity a little bit, you grab onto a bit of a building, climb up, see an enemy, blast them off the rooftop, and keep going. And it's, it's really addictive. Cole was an urban explorer before the blast, so he already had some physical abilities to climb, and he was obviously brave enough to do it. But now that he's electrically powered, he's even more able to uh, take advantage of that. It kind of amps him up even more. We had to work really, really hard on figuring out what the player really intended. Uh, when they're jumping through the air. Are they actually trying to grab that ledge or are they trying to grab the ledge next to that? We call it reading the player's mind through his thumbs. We've been pretty successful with it and it makes the game really fun to play because it, it doesn't feel like you're using the controller. If we do our, our job right, then the controller disappears. You don't think about it at all. You just do what you want to do and it happens. If you had control of electricity, what would you do? One of the reasons we decided to make Cole an electrically based superhero is that electricity is all around you when you're in the city. You see power lines everywhere, you see light poles, you see you know junction boxes on the wall. Um, so wherever Cole goes, he's kind of really in his milieu. And our character draws electricity out of the power grid and it fuels his power. And of course, because we chose electricity, we could go really deep on that one subject. We've modeled all the metal in the world to conduct electricity, to jump between objects and uh, zap people, zap enemies. We knew we really wanted him to be able to do these when hanging off the side of a pole, when standing on a bar, balancing on a bar, even when hanging from the edge of a ledge. And uh, so we really put a premium on making sure that he could do all those things and he could fluidly move from jumping and landing to immediately shooting. What we chose to do was pick the power for the hero around what would be really fun in a video game context, and then build the world, and the guy's personality, and everything around that one choice. Because we're making a superhero game, or, or a guy with superpowers, it really seemed like we need to give you this opportunity to be heroic, to make choices that were sort of for the greater good, at the expense of maybe something you might want. And for you to make a choice that feels heroic, you need to be 
given the option to be a total jerk, to be selfish. Otherwise, there is no choice. The more you use your powers for good things, you'll find that your powers start offering you opportunities to maybe be more precise with your attacks. On the flip side, the more evil you are, the more grand and destructive your powers will become kind of on a course way. And that's kind of our, our desire to really give the player this experience of, hey, it's, it's the path I'm choosing that matters. The people in Empire City, the people that you're helping, uh, they'll remember if you're a jerk. They'll remember if you're a nice person. And that'll affect how you get to play the game in the future. If they like you, they actually might lend a hand uh, with some of the things you need to do. If they don't like you, well, you'll find some spontaneous mobs forming and attacking you with rocks. And the best part is that you could just shoot them with your electrical superpower and they go flying across the world. It's a believable character in believable human situations, except for that you've got this kick-ass supernatural power and you get to choose how to use it.